Salutations. Coming to you kind of hard on a Saturday night. It's late, but as my mother used to say, I have a, a, a wild hair. So I thought I'd do this because there's something concerning all these videos and a subject that I want to make sure I've addressed it on several different videos, but I want to make sure that I bring it together clearly and cohesive for you. So this is dealing with um, energy zoa, or what are also sometimes called critters or cosmic critters. And this is going into the life aspect of not just craft, but life aspect of something that exists, I think, in our atmosphere, on our planet, in space. And these are beings that are similar to microorganisms. All right, they appear to be similar to amoeba or something like the flat the um, the rods. Those look a lot like flagellum. So what we're kind of going to do is correlate this together. And when this started for me was one is trying to understand my experiences in childhood especially and why it is that these ships feel so alive. Some of them have, as I've showed you before, have even walls that are organic. But they all feel very much alive. Even the parts of them that are more metal in nature feel very alive and consciousness, conscious. So I had started um, messing with, uh, I've done another video on that over Oregon, so I won't go too deep into that. But I started messing with Cloudbusters when I was younger. I had read a lot of Wilhelm Reich's work and also Trevor, jo Trevor James Constable did a lot of work also with Cloudbusters. So I made some and I started kind of working with them. They're more simplistic to make than you would think. But however, I wasn't grounding my water source correctly. I was using a bucket as opposed to using actually a... Uh, groundwater or a stream or something like that so I was actually building up DOR in the deadly orgone radiation is what that's called and it was actually building up in the water in my machine and so I started not feeling good and I started figuring out why and then I started going into a little further and taking pictures in ultraviolet and infrared with those old cameras and seeing some of these things around the machines and I found out later these are these critters or cosmic or cosmic critters or energy, energy zoa and they're actually feeding on that DOR so that takes us in and for, for the record DOR is something that actually happens when you like use the cloud buster to break down nimbus clouds it comes up there that's actually the DOR that deadly organ is what holds the nimbus cloud together so you're absorbing that into the radio into the machine itself and these uh, critters seem to be feeding on that I found out later when I went further into it that they experienced this also, all right? And that, um, that takes us, our, a lot of people will say, well, are these, oh, it's always this word now, archons. That's the word now for evil, demonic, negative, inorganic beings, or archons. So are these archons? Uh, you know, I would say these beings, although they're fitting on DOR, I would say no. When I looked at them and the pictures I'll put up that Trevor just Trouble James Constable had, they look more like amoeba or like some type of one cell microorganisms. And I think that's very valid. And when seeing that, uh, there's a gentleman that I actually, the first interview you ever did that got me to come forward, he kind of tricked me in his house, a gentleman named Bill Spicer. He wrote a book with that lady Margie Kay, and I put that up where he's doing a type of quantum uh, visual for craft. And it works good, it's the same technique he's already been doing. But when I saw it the first time, and he kept saying, it's a war, it's a war. But to me, it looked a lot like when I look at these beings, it looks like looking at pond scum under a microscope. You can see all the different amoebas and unicell, unicellular microorganisms moving around in pond scum. It kind of looked like that, what, is, what you're able to see with this polar, polarized glass, glasses uh, technique. Anyways, that's just something to be aware of. And now these things exist on just a level separate from us to where they're invisible uh, to, our, to our naked eyes, but not in ultraviolet and not in, in infrared. So I find that fascinating. So there's some type of organisms that, or, that inhabit our atmosphere and space. I want to cross-reference this to the NASA tether incident. I'll put pictures of that up, but that's another video I've done. And kind of correlate that with what Lewis Franks was talking about. Uh, I don't think it's quite the same thing as in these are not cosmic snowballs, but it's the possibility that those are also those critters that you're seeing out there. These, they look very much like they have a nuclei also, so it could be either that or his cosmic snowball theory. I think it could be maybe both. I don't know. That's concerning the tether incident, so I just wanted to throw that in there also. Um, uh, 
two extra books anyway. Back to back to anyway. What uh, I think this is um, something that we can take and correlate this. If we're going to take these life forms and take it to a higher scale on a different planetary scale, I think a lot of these craft you have so can be these type of critters also similar in nature to this organism. But I think the craft I've been on board are much more sentient than that and they're using that compound I've described you to also. But I think we could be dealing with different technologies and different civilizations that are more on the organic that would be using beings like this perhaps for interstellar travel, especially on the dimensional level. So that's something to be aware of when dealing with these living organism and living, living creatures, living sky creatures. Another book written by James Constable. Um, I took some few notes on this just to make sure I can kind of get this and condense it all for you. Um, different types of these, you've got the critters, you've got the worms, the cosmic worms that have been seen. Some of them have been seen in space and also what they're, I think they're calling them Eban, Eban, Ebans, E-B-A-Ns that were seen in, seen in Mexico a lot. They got Arturo Robles. He was taking a lot of pictures of those and he wound up, uh, God, I can't remember who it was. Somebody tried to discredit him by throwing a bunch of mylar balloons out and saying, oh, everything he pictures is mylar. And he completely attacked that guy. Just like uh, Tom Powell, somebody else I know, he got attacked. People trying to prove, trying to hoax them out. You know what? And that takes away from actually what this gentleman was legitimately photographing. It appeared to be these worms and things that were definitely like mylar balloons. But nonetheless, that takes us back to these organisms that exist in our atmosphere that are some type of similar to one-celled -cell organisms. Or things like, you know, like I said, rods look a lot like flagellum. Check them out. I'll put some pictures of those up. So I think that's another thing we're dealing with that is some type of a microorganism that's feeding on this orgone. And it's this life energy. These craft, I've showed you before, the engines are running on life energy. This is important when dealing with Wilhelm Reich's knowledge of the bions. Let's take it a step forward. His bion experiments, those of you that really studied that, look at the Sapa bions. I'll put some pictures up of what they look like, the cellular organisms they appear to be. And it's fascinating because some of his bion experiments dealt with dealing with uh, curing cancer. Check out what the bions were doing when they got in the presence of uh, certain cancerous cells. Fascinating research. That man was brilliant on what he was doing. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, some I've enjoyed talking about Rudy Shields with is how much knowledge he has of Wilhelm Reich's organ research. Very fascinating. Uh, you know, I think that's really most of it right there that I wanted to go over. I would appreciate everybody that uh, helps out with these videos and that supports them. My friend PC that films them. Once again, his team BSR Music. That is who puts all the music and edits these videos. That part is not mine, that's not my music. His son, he put that music together. Very grateful, it kind of gives it a good kick. Black organized, or black uh, collective here. We got it going on as far as business enterprises. So anyway, um, <clears throat> please subscribe. I appreciate you, put a like on the video. Uh, still trying to beat the shadow ban and just want to make sure that we address this energy Zoa and these critters and things. It's real, it's a very real phenomenon but it needs to be addressed, I think, differently and take more on a collective conscious level when dealing with what these creatures may be. They're not all, the ships I were on were not just simple microorganisms. They were very sentient. So I think we're dealing with something more advanced, but I think it's the beginning of where our science needs to go as far as space exploration. So keep that in mind. Peace. <laughs>